Well, isn't that a sad state of affairs, huh? I drove it over to the garage so I could get a jack under it. We'll see. I do have one just about the same condition as that one. So let's just see what we got going on here. Oh, I'm going to need uh, snap ring pliers. Let's do this. If, if you guys can, can see what we're doing, we'll back this up a little bit. It's all very precarious. I think we're good. Okay, let's get that tire off of there. I don't want to hurt my hand. There we go. And then snap ring pliers. Good. We should be able to pull that off. Then I can put some wood underneath it. That was crazy. I'll leave that ring in the cap. And we'll take it into the garage. Shop. Place. Okay, now we perform surgery inside. All right, my friends, this is the, uh, the BP-925 tire remover. You know, I think I'm going to just do that, that. I'm going to use my left-handed crescent wrench. Because I'm left-handed. And I will show you. I do this every time, guys. Okay. I'm going to close both crescent wrenches. And this one to open, you roll a pin forward. Right, I'm, I'm pushing the pin, the roller bar forward, and to open this one, you pull it backwards. Cool, huh? Zippo, you'd like that one. Good channel, Zippo Varga. Hard working guy. Okay, I'm going to take the protection off of the tube. Because we don't care if it falls in right now. And we're going to start taking this tire off of here. I want to see what happened to the tube. I know it wasn't the... Uh, I know it wasn't... What am I trying to say? I know it wasn't the transmission fluid I put in there. I'm going to have to go this way, I think, just because. Isn't that cool? Now I wonder, if I just tighten up just a little bit, if I can use the, roll, the, roll, the rotation of, the, uh, of this top bar. No, nope. Nope, not quite, eh? <laughs> Right here where it's the hard part on these small tires. Not quite. I wonder. Okay. I've used these before. I'm going to use them again. And that just keeps the tire from staying where it's put. Good. 
Now I can go almost right beside this guy. nice to do it with these small ones if I could because they're just that much easier to deal with. It's off. Now I gotta get the tube out. See where it leaks from. One of these I patched. Okay, let's just put some air in this tube and see where the leak is. <laughs> That's leaking from somewhere. guys is where it's leaking from. Let's just shoot you this direction. It's not holding air at all. So I was driving it around like a maniac in fifth gear, turning right, turning left, and I think I pinched a bead. There it is right there. My patch from, let me look it up on the computer and we'll see when I patch this bad boy. Okay, all my friend, I'm, I made that patch four and a half years ago. I thought it was further ago than that. I just got to figure out if I'm going to change out the tire. I got one that's just as ugly as the one I've got here. The problem is when I was mucking around with it, the bead on the other side uh, clipped back on. It should be good. I'm just going to stand on it. Yeah, just put a little bit of soapy water on this bead. It's, I'm kind of stunned. It should pop right through there. Like, there it is. There, now I only have to take it off one more time. My left-handed cruiser wrench. Yeah. All right. Between the choice of these two rims, this was this has been a spare. It came with the tractor nine years ago. I'm going to use this rim. The problem was on the other side and up uh, of this one, and it's really rough right in there. And uh, you know, I don't know. I was really really cranking on the steering, and uh, so it could have picked up. A rough edge from anywhere in here and pop that pop that 
patch. Thanks. So, be gentle. It's been four years since I did this. And this tire's been sitting, up, sitting under a protective cover for ten. So what part do I want to stick out? This part here. Okay. I'm going to try this again, just because it's going to be harder to put on than it was to take off. Do it twice. That's me. Okay, okay let's try this again. We'll go this way this time. And here's the big one. Come on. Why won't that go? It's so close. There we go. I just have to lift this up a little tiny bit. We are there. All right. So do I put the tube in now? I do. Good. Tube. $24.99 at Canadian Tire here in Canada. I'm going to just put a tiny bit of air in it. problems but just enough to get the wrinkles out of it. I think I can take the valve out now. The box of stuff. Box of stuff. Okay, I gotta turn you guys off for a minute. I'm losing stuff. Alright. Now we're gonna lift this up, stick the tube in. Without making too many wrinkles and keeping the 
valve stem fairly close to the hole. It doesn't have to be exact amundo, but we want to get the tube into the tire. <laughs> this is a good quality tube. I think the one I bought last time was pretty chintzy. Well, once again, if you guys see what I'm doing wrong, you can haul it. It'd be nice if this wasn't quite chest height. Waist height would be better. I'd have more leverage. Oh yeah, that's, let's just take that off of there. Well, maybe we can go around. Nope. I'm going to just take, take this little... There. He's causing me too much pain. There. I should have done that at first. Anything impeding my travels, right? Okay, where's my valve? just put the uh, valve stem on that's fat, the valve stem cover, sorry, so the tube doesn't slip back down in. Get funky with it, but I first of all, I don't want any of the tube remember this is a tubeless tire setup, right? There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put this guy back on because it does help. All right, I went with bigger clamps. But I've got the tire irons, and my old video I did not have the tire irons in. And I've got the edge of the tire underneath the clamps now, so this should go a little bit better. You really have to watch that tube. That's the key, right? Yep. Oh, tire irons, baby. Whoever reminder on my video four years ago thank you although this next step is the big one right right Just try another clamp. Use a little guy this time.
we got it. So close, man. I like the long one, it does have the leverage. Leverage, leverage, tomato, tomato. Aluminium, aluminum. There we are, we are there, baby. We're going to center the tube. It's funny, it's just a thing, eh? But if you're doing a six inch tire like me, tire, wheel, and tube, that's not designed to have a tube. This works. I'm going to put just a little bit of air in there and have a, have a look for tube pinches. I think I'm going to take it off and we can check the bottom too. Hey, hey, Ralphie Bullock! That's pretty cool, eh? So now we're going to put some unknown amount of air in here. I'm just thinking about something here. I'm going to use this. Gosh only knows if it's accurate. Just because it's digital doesn't mean it's accurate. We'll air it up. And then we'll air it down. And then we'll air it back up again to 10 pounds. Oh yeah, that air leaking is the air leaking between the tube and the tire. I heard that last time and it kind of bothered me a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to put some more air in there. Make that bead seal. There we go. We'll take that valve out of there again so that the tube can relax. Okay, let's put the uh, Schrader valve, is that the name? You guys can laugh at me, but this is probably only the 
third time I've done a small engine, a small tractor wheel. So hey, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Ten pounds. Oh, this might need batteries. Yep. No problemo. Just a minute. Issue! We hold it and take the pressure. Looks like it's a cockeyed a little bit. Just 10. Oh, I'd like to get a more accurate. Uh... Let's try. There's 10 pounds on this guy. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. We'll go to 12. Took me a while to figure out how to use it on such a low pressure, right? Good. Okay. Now, the silver colored cap. And that should do it. I want to check the air out one more time. So thanks for watching this, guys. I'm going to go stick it on the tractor now.